The Miami Dolphins 2020 journey isn't done yet, but they accomplished something in Sunday's 22-12 win against the New England Patriots this is just the second time over the past 12 seasons the Dolphins will have a winning record, and it's difficult to find a time over the past two decades in which the franchise has been surrounded by more optimism than right now. And with just two weeks left in the NFL season, the Miami Dolphins have a chance to do something no team has done in two decades. I'm just happy for these guys, Dolphins coach Brian Flores said. But honestly, for the Dolphins fans, we got great fans, people who are lifers, man. They love this team, so we're happy to bring some joy to our fans because they deserve it. The Dolphins 9-5 are solid playoff hopefuls and their clear path to the postseason is to beat both the Las Vegas Raiders and the Buffalo Bills on the road and they're in. Whether Miami makes the playoffs or not, this season is already a success and fans should be ecstatic. There's a clear direction for the franchise for the short term and long term, and it is ahead of schedule on the massive rebuild that began more than a year ago. Since day one, there was never a doubt in my mind after I met Coach Flores and got around the organization that we could do some good things, Dolphins defensive tackle Christian Wilkins said. But I just hope that good things can continue to keep happening for us, but it's all about putting the work in. I'm just excited to be a part of it. Flores deserves NFL Coach of the Year love. Cornerback Xavier Howard is worthy of NFL Defensive Player of the Year consideration and rookie quarterback Tua Tungavailoa The Dolphins are a young team with only one player who is 30 years or older, quarterback Ryan Fitzpatrick, 38. They haven't sacrificed player development in exchange for winning, they're doing both at the same time. We got a tough, mentally tough, physically tough, resilient group that knows how to deal with adversity, doesn't go in the tank, keeps fighting, keeps working, keeps coming to work, good, bad, hot, raining, whatever, whatever the situation, whatever the situation is, these guys just work, Flores said. That's one thing I know, every day that everyone's going to work hard. I don't take it for granted, but I know that that's the case. The future looks even brighter as the Dolphins hold two first round and two second round picks in the 2021 NFL Draft thanks to the Houston Texans via the Laramie Tunsil but for a team that recites the one-day-at-a-time mantra like it's a daily anthem, there's no reason to rush. Miami should savor every moment and maximize what it can do in the present, because as many Dolphins fans know, one should never take winning for granted. And more, Dolphins Tua Tungavailoa showing growth. Two weeks left in the regular season and the Dolphins are in full must-win mode to make the playoffs. It's not exactly a place one would expect to be in with a 9-5 record and two games left in the season but, thanks to the strength of the AFC, that's where things stand. Still, the fact that the Dolphins are here at all in the second season under Brian Flores is a testament to what the coach has built. Reporters CBS, who was on the broadcast for last week's win over the New England Patriots, says the way Flores approached the team from the jump helped them build to this moment. I think this all started last year when Brian Flores didn't care about tanking for Tua. He just put in what he wanted, what? He demanded from players, coach to win. They saw that, said Davis. The biggest thing is you play because you can't fool the people in the locker room. They know if you are competing and they know if you're pulling back on the reins. Once they bought in and realized this as a coach that's competing went all out. Now you carry that over to this year. Makes the big move with Tua when he doesn't have to. But, the beauty is, he did it and he still demanded the same thing. I'm not doing it because we're rebuilding, I'm not putting him in for the future, I'm putting him in because we can win now. That's exactly what's happened. Even with inserting the rookie QB into the lineup, the Dolphins have lost just two games with him under center and one of those was a one-possession loss to the top team in the AFC, the Kansas City Chiefs. For Tua, Davis has seen growth in his play, saying, you can see him getting more confidence, he's learning. I said in our last game, I felt like he was making more anticipatory throws now and I saw that again on Sunday. He points to the early interception inside the Patriots' 10-yard line that cost the team a score as being a moment where that growth was exemplified. I also saw him make a big error inside the 10-yard line going in and then he came back later in the game and in a very similar situation, similar situation, similar pass rush, he darts into the end zone. I called it artificial intelligence, where you learn from your lessons and get better the next time. That's what he is showing right now and it's a big deal, said Davis.
that the team's ground game has begun to pick up steam with over 100 yards in three of the last four weeks and 250 yards Sunday against the Patriots. That development is one that has Davis intrigued by their playoff potential. The biggest thing for them is they ran the heck out of the ball which we have not seen, said Davis. That offensive line with three rookies is built to run the football and they're starting to learn how to move people. I like that to go with that defense which likes to take the ball away. They are very aggressive ballhawks. Of course, a playoff berth is not a given. The team has to travel to Las Vegas this week for a Saturday night battle against the Raiders who are fighting for their own slim playoff hopes. As mentioned above, the Dolphins likely have to win out to assure themselves a playoff spot. The Ravens, right behind them in the wild card picture, have games against two under .500 teams left in the Giants and Bengals. If both teams finish 11-5, the Dolphins get the final spot. If they, if they lose one and Baltimore sweeps their final two, Miami comes up just short. As Davis puts it, their sledding is a little bit tougher you would think on paper than Baltimore's. The Dolphins are also hoping to maybe get some help from the Steelers, though that help may be on rocky ground after Pittsburgh's Monday night loss to Cincinnati. The Steelers face the Colts and Browns the next two weeks and if Pittsburgh were to win those games, and Miami wins their last two, they could vault to the fifth seed at 11-5. But, if they lose those games, the Dolphins are left with fighting for that seventh spot and facing a likely third matchup with division foe Buffalo, 3. Can Dolphins make it historical? With just two weeks left in the NFL season, the Miami Dolphins have a chance to do something no team has done in two decades. If things work out in their favor, the Dolphins could become the first team since 2000 to end the year with a playoff berth and a top three pick in the NFL draft. Thanks to the trade that sent Laramie Tunsil and Kenny, Kenny Stills to Houston back in August 2019, the Dolphins were able to acquire the Texans' first round pick in 2021, among other things. If the season ended today, that would mean that the Dolphins would be getting the sixth overall pick from Houston. If that ends up being the pick, the Dolphins would certainly be fine with that, but the crazy thing is that there's a chance Miami could end up picking even higher. The Texans are playing the Bengals this week and if Cincinnati somehow pulls off another upset, that would put the Texans on track to earn the third overall pick, which would then go to the Dolphins. To land the third pick, the Texans would have to lose out. They play the Titans in Week 17, and then both the Panthers and Falcons would likely have to win at least one of their two remaining games since both of them currently hold the strength of scheduled tiebreaker over Houston. The Falcons play Kansas City and Tampa Bay while Carolina will play Washington and New Orleans. As for the playoffs, the Dolphins actually control their own fate. If they win their final two games over the Raiders and Bills, they'll make the playoffs no matter what else happens around the league. Getting to the playoffs in a season where you also land a top three pick is almost unheard of. The last time it happened came in 1999-2000 with During the 1999 season, Washington got into the playoffs by winning the NFC East with a 10-6 record. As for the draft, they actually had three first-round picks the following offseason. Washington went into the 2000 NFL draft with the second overall pick, the 12th overall pick and the 24th overall pick their original pick. Like the Dolphins, Washington landed its two higher picks through two trades. They acquired the 12th pick in a deal that sent Sean Gilbert from DC to Carolina. As for the second overall pick, they got that during the 1999 draft when the Saints decided to trade up to the fifth spot to land Ricky Williams. In exchange for giving up the fifth overall pick, the Saints sent eight picks to Washington, including their first, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, and seventh round selections in 1999 along with their first round and third rounder in 2000. The Saints ended up finishing the 1999 season at 3-13, which gave Washington the second overall pick, which they used on LeVar Arrington. Arrington. Washington would also end up picking third that year after trading its two first-round picks 12th and 24th and two other picks to San Francisco. With the third overall spot, they ended up selecting offensive tackle Chris Samuels. What this all means is that by the end of the season, the Dolphins could find themselves in a spot that few NFL teams have ever been in.